Well, we go from all that beef, beefing going on in the state Supreme Court to this. Beef. Beef. You like it? Love it. I do too. I try to eat more <laughs> chicken than beef, but I'll Doesn't never, mean you don't like it. I'll never turn down a burger. Okay? Or a good steak. Right. I like so, that one right there. Yeah. A lot of I, I don't like this part, the price part. Like no. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody does. So last night when I was going through stories, this one caught my eye, and it is about beef and the beef industry, okay? But here's, it was the headline that made me want to learn more. A mere 12% of Americans eat half the nation's beef. What? 12% <laughs> of Americans eat half the nation's beef. That's big a lot of beef for big, a small amount of people. Big question is, who are the 12%? We'll find out in just a moment. But the problem with that and just eating beef in general is creating health issues because of cholesterol sure. and environmental impacts, okay? So this was a study that was actually, it was done at Tulane University, which is down in Louisiana, but they used some data that was collected by the CDC. The CDC's National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey looked at 10,000 adults, U.S. adults, and just tracked their meals over a 24-hour period just to see what are people eating, how much and what, okay, I'm that's not sure I'm gonna thing. like this. So using that data, Tulane University researchers found that the biggest beef eaters, that 12% consuming half of the nation's meat, beef, excuse me, beef, is mostly men and or women between the ages of 50 and 65. It's that age group eating the largest amount of beef. What's wrong, Chris? You're in there, right? No comment. <laughs> Those below the age of 29 <laughs> and above the age of 66 were least likely to eat large amounts of beef, okay? But here's the bottom line. Here's what the researchers say. We focused on beef because it is high in saturated fat, which is not good for your health, and also because of its impact on the environment. And this was one thing that I didn't realize, and it was really rather shocking. The global food system, this is the, the production of sure. all food for the entire globe, for all humans, emits 17 billion tons of greenhouse gases a year. That's equivalent to a third of the planet warming gases produced by human activity. The takeaway here is, you know, again, just like uh, fossil fuels. Well, reducing fossil fuels is one way to help reduce those emissions, but let's be honest, we need some fossil sure. fuels, we always will. So that's why you have to whittle away at other parts, and they're saying this is one area where we can shrink that carbon footprint, okay? okay. So they say, and this is interesting, the beef industry contributes heavily to that amount, eight to 10 times more emissions than chicken and over 50 times more than beans. So you get the idea of where they're going. They're saying what we need to do is really kind of target that age group or that group of people. Why are you uh, looking at me? Especially <laughs> because six of the top 10 sources were mixed dishes, things like burgers, burritos, tacos, meatloaf. All delicious. Where you, where you could substitute chicken or at least sure, partially right. use some chicken or more, more beans, okay? So that's that study. But one more quick thing, because this story made me Go to, oh. to, to, to learn more on these dietary guidelines for Americans. This shocked me. It suggests four ounces per day of meat, poultry, and eggs combined for those consuming 2,200 calories per That's day. That's not that, a lot. No, it's That's not. What, what else little, do you live on? That's a tiny little filet. And you're supposed I mean, to like reduce. A fork, that's a forkful. And you're supposed to reduce to carbs, it, right? which leave you with what? Fruits and vegetables. Right. Brad, which is I think okay. we just found the beef with <laughs> yes. your beef story. All right, Brad, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. When we